What's going on guys? I'm here at the Wild Cab Bar and I'm working here on my laptop here. I'm gonna make the first Jiu Jitsu video, take you guys through a day of what it's like for me to be teaching a class at Jiu Jitsu Land and going for six rounds with some of my students. Jiu Jitsu is something I love a lot and for me to be able to share it with you guys is always a pleasure. If you guys like Jiu Jitsu, you might like this video. If you don't like Jiu Jitsu, it might get a little bit weird. <laughs> what are you guys doing? So typically when we're teaching a class, we'll go through a few techniques. The first one here is a pretty simple technique, but I've got to start with a base. So the first technique is really simple. It's just a roll sweep when a guy tries to get past your guard. So it'll take me about five or six minutes to go through these techniques, and then it'll be my student's turn to practice the technique before we move on to the second technique. The second technique is a lot more interesting. We're working our way into a kimura position so we could try to go for a shoulder break. And if the guy possibly rolls, we can kind of transition into an armbar to break the elbow instead. <laughs> Did you hear the typhoon coming tomorrow? No. Can't stand the rain. And the last move is probably the hardest. We're going to use this same type of over under posture to transition into an arm drag, work our way to the back position, which is one of the strongest positions in Jiu Jitsu. Right, so in general, once the technique is over, we transition into our rounds, and free rolling is what we call it. Rolling is kind of like a lingo for Jiu Jitsu people. Rolling just means sparring. The rest of this video is going to be six rounds of me sparring with my students, and I'm going to add a little bit of commentary to some of the action. So my first round here is with one of my purple belts. He's got a lot of heavy pressure passing. Too much pressure can also be sometimes a bad thing because it collar, foot, stand-up sweep that I just use on him here. This is a really nice transition that he worked on me. He went out the back door to attack a single leg, and he's trying to transition to a double leg, but I'm being very vigilant here and blocking this hand. Here, I'm, I've got a really good grip on his wrist, and I'm not gonna let him grab my other leg. And usually, if it was a tournament, I probably wouldn't sit for a sweep like this, but I, in this case, we were stuck in the position in a stalemate for such a long time. I'm able to make just enough space to recover to my guard. I'm able to catch a pretty nasty submission on this guy. And you can see he's trying everything he can to not let me posture up. He's actually trying to roll me back onto my head. What I'm looking to do here is to bring my head forward so I can start attacking his shoulder. He makes the mistake of feeding his ankle here. As you can see, his ankle is coming through and I grab the ankle and I lock a triangle. So I've got his right shoulder and his left ankle being pulled together. And on the opposite side, I have his left elbow pulling back behind his back, applying a tremendous amount of pressure on both of his shoulder sockets here. We can call that the human pretzel. Pretty sick submission. I'm glad I caught that one on video. Here we are, round two, with my friend Saeed. Moving pretty quickly and he gets swept pretty quickly by the getup sweep. I'm trying to really smash his knee here, you can see. Uh, with the style of passing that I'm using on him here, I'm constantly trying to dominate his top knee and, and smash it to the ground. He's doing a really good job creating space and preventing me from killing that knee. So a little bit of movement, I'm able to pass his guard. And catch a quick Kimura here, which is another lock that attacks the shoulder. Besides being a little bit too crazy here, I'm able to get into like a pretty interesting honey hole sweep. Some moves in jiu-jitsu, if you're applying too much pressure, that pressure can be used against you and this honey hole sweep is one of those sweeps. Okay, round three is with one of my blue belts and I like to roll with my blue belts. I can let them flow a little bit and a lot of our blue belts are just so scrappy they're just moving so much all the time i can kind of experiment and use a different style of passing or float float through their guards to transition to odd positions and here you can kind of see the level difference because i'm actually kind of anticipating his movements and he's kind of falling into my anticipation so one of the cool things about being a black belt is you can kind of guess how the guy's gonna move when he's trying to escape from a bad position. And so you start chaining these sequences together in a way where you're always constantly one step ahead of the guy and he's just barely, barely fighting to keep up. And in many cases, he's not really keeping up at all. He's just barely surviving. So 
what I want for a loose arm bar there. I'm just kind of floating around trying all sorts of new stuff. He shoots for a footlock there, but that type of footlock is actually a really low, low success rate footlock. But he's got a lot of good movement, you can see he's... So here I'm grabbing a choke, and when he starts to defend the choke, I use it to sweep the guy. The choke is kind of like a distraction, the sweep being the main attack. And he's falling into some of my strongest passing sequences, and I'm able to finish with an armbar very quickly since it's one of my strongest sequences here. So here I've got him in a triangle, but I've also got him his leg. So it's a pretty nasty position. I was gonna to try to work a triangle here, but my legs are pretty short. So I transition to an armbar here, but the elbow is just a little bit too shallow. I'm not gonna be able to catch it. So I just catch a toe hold just to distract him so it can come up on top and the round expires. Right, round four is with one of my tough brown ball students. He's really tough, really good hand fighting. Hard to really get any movement because we're so we're like pretty much at a stalemate with most of the hand fighting. Unfortunately for this round, Said rolls right in front of us and pretty much blocks all of the action. There's a few sequences where he almost sweeps me and a few sequences where I almost pass his guard, but it is almost completely blocked by the people in front of us. Like right here is when I'm starting to pull a really good sequence, almost almost catch a pass, but that's pretty much it for round four. Round five is one of my longtime students. Someone he's a really good brown belt. We know each other's game so well that really I just have to be extremely explosive with him to, to try to catch him off guard. So I'm trying to come up on a double but my head placement's not so good and he's able to drive me back down. I'm trying to find my way underneath him but he's really good at preventing me from getting the hooks that I want so I can force my way under his hips. And here I've got his foot so I can try to get in, but he's constantly sprawling to prevent me from getting into the positions that I like. This is kind of interesting, he actually pummels his head down underneath, and he's kind of got me in a leg drag position here, which is a really bad position for me, so I'm pushing as hard as I can to try to create just enough space to regard. Right, and he's kind of going into that same over-under sequence here to try to put me in a bad position, but my knee's able to slip out. I'm able to create enough space and the time expires. Okay, round six is with one of my scrappy purple belts. He's very explosive, so especially with people who are larger than me, I'm almost always trying to just get underneath them. I'm using this hand on the ankle grip here to try to get underneath him, but he's explosive with his sprawl here, and right as I'm trying to get underneath him, instead of getting underneath him, he sprawls out and puts me in a really bad position here where I'm able to sneak a hook in and regard. some good hand fighting here. I'm trying to spin underneath him where he goes for a toe hold. So I abandon position and end up in another bad spot here. I'm scrambling, he's about to take my back, but I, ooh, catch him right in the face. And I stiff arm him right in the face, which prevents him from taking my back. Finally, I'm able to get underneath him and he's trying a little bit too hard to, to try to stop me from getting into X guard, which in turn, I catch him in like a reverse X guard sweep here. He's trying really hard to get underneath me. He's using these lapel grips to try to set up the worm guard. And I know what he's trying to do, so I'm pummeling under to stop him from getting his grips, and time expires. I'm glad I was able to share something that I love with you guys today. Thanks for watching. I'll probably be making some more of these Jiu-Jitsu Land videos in the future. I'll catch you guys next time.